I remember talking to Catty about you because I still consider him to be w one of the people whose opinion I care about most in terms of, yeah. of Scrum. And the conversation had obviously started because of your own weight. <laughs> <laughs> My little legs, bro. I remember him saying, like, this boy can play kind of thing. I remember, even back, even back then, I remember him saying that. Certainly early on, it's when people people are, are telling you stuff about about your game or about the, the way you're approaching things, that there are some people who you're like, yeah, okay. And there are some people who you're like, um, I don't respond well to criticism. Yeah, full stop from anyone. Yeah, generally speaking. I just, it just doesn't work for me. Like, it doesn't work. How do you know what you need to get better at? Okay, we probably need to define what criticism is. Like, uh, but um, my understanding of it is like, you're just saying something bad about something somebody has done. Right. You're not actually improving it, if you know what I mean. Right, okay. Um, so if somebody's like to me, Benno, that was bad. It's sort of like, well, that's not very helpful, my yeah. friend. Um, okay, thanks very much. Cool. Do you know what I mean? Like, how, how, how do you respond? I actually, knowing you as a person, I know you... You're, I feel like you're the type of person to tell someone that was bad. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah, be, yeah. I'll be pretty blunt. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a very blunt communicator. I'm a big believer in, in truth and stuff like that. But I'll speak to someone who's like 26, 27 in the team very differently to how I'll speak to someone who's coming through the academy. I'm very conscious of how I speak to someone now. And I think maybe when I was 25, 26, 27, perhaps I didn't. Perhaps it was like blanket, machine gun fire. Everyone's getting the same. <laughs> yeah, people Everyone's getting court. the same level of data. <laughs> now I'm a lot more objective with who I'm speaking to, how I'm speaking to them. What's the purpose? You can't use hammers on yeah. on people that actually- Sometimes you want it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've thought this for a while. Like you, So when you, if I'm gonna give you some feedback, I give you absolute 10 out of 10 feedback. You take from that, at best, seven out of 10. Yeah. Because you don't agree with me, which is why you've done something different, but maybe you understand my, my point of view and understand that actually in the bigger picture, but there's also a bit of ego at play and you're like, no, I'm gonna take seven out of 10. As you get more mature and more confident in your own abilities, you become aware that receiving is sometimes just as important as giving. There's a real distinction between the kinds of leaders and their their kind of status as leaders. I, I, I'll say this kind of the, the social the social hierarchy of it. So um, Steve Lutu, he's the captain. He communicates very very differently than John Afoa. John Afoa is more experienced. He's been around the game longer. He's reached higher heights. He's done more, but kind of climbing the leadership mountain is different to like the career mountain. They're different, they're different things. I, I completely agree. I just think there's like, I don't know how to explain it, but there's, there's essentially two types of leaders within any squad. Um, you have like someone who's like, as you said, like a status leader, like they sort yeah. of, they're like the leader by, by appointment. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, that we're like told... By virtue of who they are. Yeah. Their we're CV. told that's our leader. If you understand yeah. what I mean? And then and then you follow. Whilst there, there are the other leaders in the group where you just admire yeah. them, if you know what I mean? Um, 
and you find the way they like conduct themselves like quite admirable and honourable and you sort of want to be similar to those yeah. people or seen like Catty was one of those yeah. people. You don't even always think about it, do you? No, you don't. It's very it's very subconscious, like yeah. and then retrospectively you kind of realise and that's what Catty was like the obvious yeah. one to me, because he um he just like the way he lived his life or the way he lived his career was just like, oh, he's like it's just something that you admire. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. you want to be similar to that. And then therefore you then conduct yourself in a similar way. Yeah, yeah. And I think, yeah, those, those leaders, I, I personally appreciate those leaders more than I do. Yeah, like, yeah like, it's a real, it's a real integrity thing. Though, yeah, genuine, genuine. It's, it's, it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, did you feel, did you feel like your nose was put out when Max came in? Did you feel like you'd been pushed down the pecking order because he'd come in? A little bit. I don't know why as well. Like when I sit there at like nineteen, I'm like, yeah. bro, like yeah. you know, when you, you retrospectively, you're in the mix. Yeah, like you, you're closer yeah. than you should be anyway, yeah. Ben. So like, do yeah. you know what I mean? Um, um, and it really, really isn't the end of the world at nineteen. But like, I think when you are nineteen, you think like everything is everything's important. a big deal. Yeah, mate, it doesn't change. I still feel it now. Yeah, like every you think about every decision too much, mm. and like it, it matters. And I, th I think that now about. Like when I when I first got into the team, like what I was feeling as a as like eighteen nineteen was the same stuff going on with the the guys ahead of me. But you don't realise that at the time. Mm. Like Assy's sixty caps of Wales. He's starting every week. Yeah. He's awesome, but he doesn't have a good game. And suddenly, like Catty's playing, and he's like, now his nose is put out of mm. joint. Like a, like it doesn't change. It's weird. It's weird how you don't. You don't think about that at the time. But my feeling is different. Like, so I think like when you're 19, you're a little bit more insecure, essentially yeah. because you don't know what you're capable of. Yeah. And then I think you get to like my age, your age now, and you're sort of a bit like, I know what I can do. Yeah. So it's like, I'm annoyed at you, but I'm not doubting my ability at yeah. the same time. Do you understand yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like when yeah. you're 18, You've got 19, more confidence in precisely, what Precisely, you, you just know what you're capable of doing. Yeah. You've done it so many times. Whilst back then you, you haven't done it. So you're a little bit like, Am I? You're yeah. just like you're just yeah. not sure yet. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And that sort of like yeah. will I live up to precisely? What, like, and it hides itself in like anger towards people yeah. rather than like like actually introspectively looking at yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? What was your breakthrough like? Actually, because I wouldn't have witnessed it. You probably you obviously saw mine. Um, you were in the team, <laughs> um, so I don't know what your breakthrough year was like. Uh, it was. Uh, I was a strange one for me. I I found out because. A report from the Times rang my hotel that I was staying in for the summer holiday. He got got hold of that and like uh, rang me in the hotel room. It was like Dave Atwood, it's Stephen Jones from the Times. So I was like, sorry, what? I say because I, I kind of didn't go through the growth academy kind of setup. I signed a senior contract, so I started rugby as a senior player. Yeah, I I came into what felt like a really new environment. Like there was a lot of kind of transformation going on at Bath at the time. There was a lot of new players, people like Francois Lowe coming in, people like Danny Grucock going out the other side. Like there was a lot of significant player transition. And I I kind of came in feeling very much like an imposter. Like I, I had got some of this kind of national recognition, but I didn't really feel like I'd delivered much on the field that kind of warranted that. Did, did you feel that imposter syndrome at all, like quite a bit earlier on in your career? Yeah, yeah, quite absolutely heavily. so. Yeah, I think I think for a long time. I think 2013, 2014, so certainly mid mid twenties onwards, that I started feeling like it's it's weird. It's hard. It's hard to you certainly would never articulate at the time, but to feel like I'm in the team. Mm. I haven't seen the team selection, but I'm fit, so I'm in the team. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm confident. I'm assured enough in my own capabilities that, looking around me, I know that I'm in the team unless there is a reason, kind of thing. And that reason is I'm injured or I'm unavailable or, or whatever. But that didn't come to 24. I say mid, mid to late 20s. Before that, you so you th you think so. I missed a tackle this weekend. Am I going to be dropped? Like in the grand scheme of things, that's such an insignificant yeah, thing. Of course. But like I say, as, a, as an older person now, I understand the value of all the communication and stuff like that, which back then didn't matter to me because the metrics I judged myself by were ball carry, scrum, scrum ascendancy, tackles. Like that was the metrics, we put them on the wall. 
Tom Dunn made 47 tackles this weekend. Yeah. His face is mangled. Like, he's going to be playing. Maybe Tom Dunn's not, not in the team next week because it's not actually about how many tackles. It's not there's that so, straightforward. Yeah, yeah, there's so much more goes into it. Like, rugby's such a complex game that it's yeah. not that straightforward. Yeah, play. and I think as a younger player, you, you don't really realise that. You, you, you see the metrics in front of you, the obvious stuff, the statistics that you can kind of get your head around. When you first first got a call with Eddie, and you got up in in the mix up there, did you feel like your profile changed, or that was just like a part of part of what was going on? Nah, def there was definitely like a significant change. Like I think before I had been called up, I had never spoken to anyone other than like Somerset Life or whatever they were. Yeah, with. yeah. And then and suddenly you, you And got... then next thing I know, I mean I'm sitting there with like the Daily Mail and yeah. The Guardian yeah. and yeah, all at like five, six different national papers for the first time. And I think that was the first time I was like, oh right, like this is this is a little yeah. bit different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that definitely changed, but um Did you notice anything change in what you did at the club as a result of that? It's different. Coaches talk to you differently. Man. Yeah, they do massively. They, it makes a, a completely different yeah. image. Suddenly, you've got a voice that impacts the team. You're now not a part of the team. You're helping direct the team. So coaches are talking to you, and it's, they're not dictating to you. They're discussing with you, and they trusted you to do a job. But now they're talking about the job to you. It's like a different. Yeah. Like this is this is a strange thing. Like I get the imposter thing again. Like. Because because I did a degree, because I've just done a law conversion, because I've I've played this game for a long time, because I've got a, a, a good rugby CV, I get asked a lot of time to to speak to, to schools and kids and, and groups of people and what advice do you give and all this kind of stuff. And God, I feel like an imposter all the time, mm. all the time. Because I don't feel like I've earned any of that. I feel like this this kind of stuff has just happened. Mm. I've just been around and rugby happened and I got a phone call from, from Martin Johnson and then I played for England and then like I, what I'm waiting for is the moment where I'm like oh yeah I deserved that and I haven't got there yet I wouldn't say I agree with that um, personally um, I feel like I feel like at some point you probably should you know, see a therapist, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, you should actually like understand that like you have achieved those things because yeah. I, I, I and it's it's sort of like you understand that you've done it, but you don't need to like dwell on it. You see, like my my existence within rugby has always been quite different. I've I don't ever feel like I've been or I ever am going to be like one of the boys. Um, in that sense, I won't lie to you. <laughs> I'm not going for beers with the boys. I'm not. I'm not that brother. You know. Um, I'm just slightly separate. You know. Like I um, feel like that's quite a big advocate for the way you set your life up outside of rugby. Yeah, probably to yeah. create that kind of independence from rugby because it's certainly something I've experienced and you see it. I mean, you'll see it with so many of the kids coming through. Like rugby's life. Rugby's everything. Mm. I remember you even texted me after one game. Do you remember yeah. that actually? When you yeah. were in France, that meant a lot to me. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but you texted me after one game, and it's like I still have like quite a good connection with yeah. you, even though you're not like you won't catch up regularly. But yeah. when you do, it's never like yeah. um, it's never like it's it's very still warm. If you yeah. understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I felt I had the same with a lot of people that it's just it's still a warm connection. But I just don't talk to everybody every yeah. day. And I think that's just like cultural differences. The way it's just, you just build that sort of slight separation. Yeah. And it's, it's sort of like what you have when you're younger, it's not what you have when you're older. So it's sort of like when you're younger, you yeah. have time. Yeah. You have the time. and the, But when you're older, you have the security. Yeah. You still have aspirations, but um, you look at life in like a, a wider view. What is life? Where are you going afterwards? I don't know yet. Um, Where do you want to go? Where do you think you might go? I don't don't know. think about it. Don't get deep. On it. <laughs> Where do you want to be? I don't think that's a simple question to answer. It's not a simple question, but it also is a really simple question. But you just want to be happy, right? Well, that's, that's it. clear. Where do you want to be? What makes you happy? 
Ah, uh, that's a complex answer. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't give that to you in a sentence. But um, I just want to be happy. I want to have impact on people. I want to like I'm, I, I love I love rugby, but I don't want to I don't want to be involved in in coaching rugby or, or training people in rugby. Like I feel like rugby has given me so much, not just in terms of opportunities, but in terms of growth as a person. I feel like rugby's given me so much. I love what it's done for me, and I feel like that's something that other people should have the opportunity to experience. That you can't underestimate the value of. The shared experience that you yeah. both, that you both uh, yeah, because not many people get to to do this right. Precisely. Yeah.